Well, good morning and welcome to beautiful Keystone Resort in Keystone, Colorado for our Summit at the Summit National Grand Rounds on the State of American Medicine. And let me tell you everyone here, I just came in from outside and it is beautiful here. The sun is up. If you look at that picture on your slide, the sky is blue, the mountains are just gorgeous. So welcome everyone. My name is Dr. Dan Cravioto, and I am an orthopedic surgeon from Santa Barbara, California, and one of the founders of the Let My Doctor Practice movement and president of United Physicians and Surgeons of America, who is hosting this conference. Hey, we're excited. We think we have assembled some awesome speakers to really speak to the issues that are impacting physicians in their everyday practices. So we are really, really looking forward to this week. It is our hope and our desire that this week will forge relationships, allow us to network, learn from each other, promote physician unity, and lead at the end of the week to actionable solutions. It is our goal to mobilize and engage physicians to create a united voice for responsible change in healthcare and to restore physicians' autonomy, and to protect the doctor-patient relationship. In short, it is time to restore the practice of medicine to those of us who actually practice medicine. And before I go any further, let me just tell you right now, we want to hear from you. And throughout this webcast, today and for the remaining days of this week, you can chat with us. If you look at the right-hand side of your uh, computer monitor, there's a little chat box there. You can also email us, you can phone us, and you can text us, text us, excuse me. We want to hear from you, and the more interaction there is from physicians across this country, and for that matter, international physicians as well, we want to hear from you. It, I think it just, it improves this conference, it brings value to it, so please, send us your questions, send us your thoughts. I just want to introduce our conference host and our steering committee. Andrea Berry from Amber Agency has been our event coordinator and has been instrumental and just a true professional in allowing us to put on a, a classy conference like this. And to Andrea and to all of her team, we thank her so much. There have been four physicians on our steering committee. Uh, Dr. Michael Strickland is an internal medicine uh, physician out of Cincinnati, Ohio. Dr. Judith Thompson is a general surgeon and a breast surgeon out of New Braunfels, Texas. Dr. Regina Malink is an oncologist from Hillsboro, Ohio. And myself, Dr. Daniel Cravieto, I, as I mentioned previously, I'm an orthopedic surgeon from Santa Barbara, California. Special thanks to Alex Serdici, who was in, helped us with our initial web design, and then also to Vanessa French from Pivot Point. Pivot Point is a national PR firm that has helped us with our Let My Doctor Practice movement and has developed our website. I just want to throw up this slide and uh, to show everyone the number of attending organizations that are going to either be here in person or webcast in who are going to speak here. And I won't, you can look at them on the screen, but it's pretty impressive and I think the thing it, it's I think the take home message is that there's a number of organizations around the country who are saying kind of similar things. And I think the take home message is that something is not right here in healthcare, and especially from the physician's perspective. And, and so I just thank each and every organization for participating, for being here, and for sharing and bringing something to this conference. I want to mention a special supporter, Merritt Hawkins, has really helped us get the word out. And a, a special thanks to Philip Miller, who is the Vice President of Communications at Merritt Hawkins. And then also a special thanks to Kurt Mosley, who is the Vice President of Strategic Alliances, and who Kurt will actually be speaking to us later in the week. Well, I just want to share a little bit uh, with you about how I got here, how all of us got together, and give you a little bit of that history. It was April 2014, and uh, we had an electronic health record, and uh, I remember very clearly it was one night, and I, after dinner I had another two hours of dictation and medical records to do, and 
I remember thinking at that time that, you know, I was just absolutely fed up and frustrated that bureaucrats, not in our healing profession, had imposed, imposed, imagine that, imposed legislative mandates that had altered my workflow, decreased my efficiency, increased the demands on my time, taken away from precious patient care, intruded on the very sanctity of the doctor-patient relationship, and in short, made me feel like a data entry person doing clerical work. So I wrote this op-ed, and I entitled it A Doctor's Declaration of Independence, and the Wall Street Journal published it on April 29, 2014. There were 1,462 comments and 2,936 tweets. And for three days, it was the number one most commented on op-ed in the Wall Street Journal online edition. And I knew immediately, and I, I didn't even think it would, it just really surprised me, but I knew immediately when I saw the outpouring of letters and emails that I had touched a chord with physicians across this country, and even international physicians I had send me some responses. And so letters and emails came in. I got invites to do TV and radio shows. And I tried to respond to all of those who reached out to me. One of the physicians who reached out was Dr. Michael Strickland. He wrote me a letter and said, hey, Dan, I'd love to talk to you. Please give me a call. And I gave Michael a call shortly after that. And I remember the conversation. Clearly, I was sitting in my busy orthopedic practice at my desk. And we chatted. And he goes, well, I, was, I liked your op-ed, Dan, but what are we going to do about this? We need to do something. And I told him, hey, um, I'm pretty busy right today, but how about if I call you back in a few days and we'll talk about this? Hung up the phone. Well, I have a busy practice, and days went by and days went by. And Michael Strickland, and I will share this about him, and I mean it, it's a compliment. He is like a pit bull because when he believes that he is on the right side of an issue, and he is passionate about something, he just won't let go. And so, so it was, 10 days later, Dr. Strickland calls me back and says, hey, Dan, yeah, Mike, um, did I say something that offended you in any way? No. Did my letter offend you in any way? No. Well, you said we were going to do something. What are we going to do about this? And so that became kind of the, that was kind of the moment in time that convicted me that, you know what? You can't just talk things. You can't just write things. You got to follow up. You got to follow through. You got to act. And so from that moment on, Dr. Strickland and I met on Saturdays. He soon brought in two of his colleagues, Dr. Judith Thompson and Dr. Regina Melling. We shortly then hired Andrea Berry from Amber Agency to help plan this event. We formed United Physicians and Surgeons of America, a nonprofit entity. We hired Pivot Point a national PR firm to help with our messaging and to create a movement which we entitled Let My Doctor Practice and Pivot Point then developed our website. And so for over a year, we've been meeting every Saturday on go-to meetings for two hours. And I, honestly, there's probably only been about five or 10 Saturdays that we didn't meet. A lot of time, a lot of meetings. You know, we strategized, we planned, we reached out to physicians, we thought about topics, we thought about issues. And all of that, we are now at the culmination of this, and we're now here. And so that's kind of a short introduction about how we all met and where we're coming from. Uh, we look forward to the week. And with that short introduction, I would now like to introduce Dr. Michael Strickland and Dr. Judith Thompson. And we are going to go to Judy first for her opening thoughts and comments. So thank you, Judy. Thank you, Dan. Good morning. I'm Dr. Judith Thompson, a solo practitioner and a general and breast surgeon from New Braunfels, Texas. I want to thank Michael and Gina and Dan for the opportunity to participate in this unique event. About a year and some change ago, I too got a phone call from Michael. Michael and I have been friends since college, and I wondered what was up. He had a couple of things to say to me, and one was that third-party intrusion into the practice of medicine had just gone too far. He had recently read Dr. Craviato's op-ed in the Wall Street Journal, a doctor's declaration of independence, and he asked me to participate in an effort to create a united voice for responsible change, to restore the physician autonomy and protect the physician-patient relationship. 
At that time, I believed that I was like many of you. I had a busy and full life. I believed initially that I had little, if any, resources, especially time, to devote to a national effort like this. But Michael's words rang true. Third-party intrusion into the practice of medicine has gone too far. The physician-patient relationship has been violated by individuals who have no medical education and who have no mechanism for accountability in healthcare delivery. I believe that it is, in fact, our individual responsibility by having taken the Hippocratic Oath to say no to these intrusions. We then created a vehicle for our voices and our message, United Physicians and Surgeons of America, a grassroots not-for-profit organization dedicated to restoring the practice of medicine to those who actually practice medicine. To use metaphor, our grassroots organization popped up on what I call the ocean of healthcare delivery transformation. And once there, we found ourselves among other grassroots organizations, all sailing toward a similar goal, each from their own unique perspective. We decided at that point to initiate the Let My Doctor Practice movement and this summit at the summit to provide an opportunity for all interested individuals and organizations to come together, have their message heard, magnify their voice, and importantly, work together to all help each other reach the goals that we have set forth. We have held inclusivity and not exclusivity as a guiding principle. We began to reach out to other grassroots organizations and individuals who chronicled the history of American medicine, those who had elucidated where we are at the, this time, and those with a vision for our future. Graciously, these individuals and groups responded, and so here we are today, collectively bringing our voices and thoughts together to create a plan to move forward. I want you to know that this is an historic opportunity and it is a privilege provided in large part by a man with vision and courage, a man who walks his talk, a man who puts his money where his mouth is, and that's Dr. Michael Strickland. I pray that the rest of us here this week can follow with the integrity, conviction, dedication, and persistence exemplified by Dr. Strickland. Michael, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. Judy. Thank you for sharing that. And, and now, Dr. Michael Strickland. <clears throat> thank you, Dr. Cravioto, Dr. Thompson. And I want to say a special thanks to my wife, Dr. Regina Malink. Uh, without her, none of this would be possible. It's a great privilege to be here with all of you to open this national conversation with doctors and patients across America on the state of American medicine. The great obstacles we face today in delivering high quality professional care and solutions to those obstacles. As physicians have become more and more impeded from utilizing our training and experience to help our patients to the best of our ability by outside forces who lack this education and experience and who are dictating to physicians how we will practice yet leave the personal and legal consequences of the outcomes of their directives to the patient and doctor in question. And as we saw more and more doctors and patients alike voicing their increasing frustrations and injuries from this practice of medicine without license, while effective corrective actions seem nowhere on the horizon, the doctors of United Physicians and Surgeons of America joined together to create this event where those most affected could discuss and support actionable solutions. UPSA is not a membership organization and does not seek to become one. It was created only to provide a microphone for the many organizations and individuals who share these concerns, beginning with those who have worked tirelessly at great personal and financial cost to learn the root causes of the problems and to provide evidence-based and workable proposals for solutions, and then a mechanism for both medical and other professionals and patients to discuss, debate, and then lend their documented support to those ideas and leaders they find the most worthy. As many may not be aware, the American Medical Association, which once counted 75% of our doctors as members, and thus was the undisputed voice of American medicine overall, has seen its membership to decline to less than 20% today. And while the AMA and other fine medical organizations, many of which are represented here this week, strive to provide that voice of our country's experienced clinicians. None can currently claim to represent the majority, 
leaving our profession as a whole effectively speechless. This has had devastating consequences for doctors, patients, and the nation alike. We encourage physicians across this country to lift your noses from the grindstone for a time, and for the sake of patient and profession, lend your learned opinion to the conduct of your own profession, which only you can truly understand. Let me share with you some disturbing numbers. The Physicians Foundation, in conjunction with Merritt Hawkins, the nation's leading physician placement firm, and the University of Tennessee, has conducted biennial surveys of doctors since 2008. In 2012, fully 84% of respondents, 84%, said our profession was in decline, while 82% felt there was little or nothing we could do about it. Last year, nearly 40% of doctors across all age groups, including the youngest, said they would accelerate their retirement plans due to changes in our healthcare system. This on top of an already predicted looming shortage within five years of over 100,000 doctors, according to the Association of American Medical Colleges. I hear various remedies discussed in the media, such as training more doctors or replacing them with mid-level providers. How about this solution? Stop treating highly trained and experienced physicians like we don't know how to practice our own profession, such that 40% plan to leave their intolerable work environment as soon as they are able. Here's a more encouraging bit of news. 80% of all healthcare spending is directly attributable to physician orders. We have every bit and more the power we need to take back control of our own profession. We simply currently lack a coordinated central nervous system. Surely we, as scientific professionals, can agree on a few basic central tenets of caring for those who entrust their lives to us, which transcend any politics or payment models. Thoughtful, focused, problem-solving care of the patient before us is a fine and beautiful treasure which must be protected to some extent from the brutality of money and politics if it is to exist at all. My younger sister, Dee Dee Bergestuen, MD, PhD, was diagnosed suddenly over three and a half years ago with stage four lung cancer, with metastases too numerous to count from brain to pelvis, as a healthy 43-year-old who had never smoked. Today, she is alive and doing well, having just returned to practice this month and speaking here later this week. There is nothing more beautiful than that. Excuse me. Let the physicians focus to the greatest extent possible on their science and art. Let them provide their patient with their best recommendation than any alternatives they see in order of preference to the best of their ability. Let patients then, and other payers, if the patients have chosen to contract with them, work out which of these options can be realized from a financial standpoint. Let the doctor have both the right and obligation to create a legible, coherent, succinct and complete medical document before signing and assuming responsibility for its contents. Let the payer then read that document before contacting the physician with any questions that remain. This summit's fully interactive platform has been created by a team of professionals with over 30 years experience in staging events for large organizations, including the AMA and major celebrities. They have assembled for our benefit a robust system to allow us to converse with nationally recognized physician and other experts in the field of healthcare structure and policy, as well as colleagues around the country, to discuss, refine, and vote to document support of resolutions, solutions, and leaders that can lead us forward into a brighter future for American medicine. Polling will be conducted independently by Merritt Hawkins and the University of Tennessee, and all content and commentary listed during this conference will be available for on-demand viewing throughout the event this week and plan for future detailed review and analysis once funds to pay for the cost of collecting this information have been secured. All viewpoints are welcomed at this unique opportunity. If you are an architect or supporter of the system as it exists today, we urge you to show us how you have successfully implemented it to demonstrably improve patient care. If you can do that, we will be in a position to adopt your model. If you cannot, let us work together to create a health system which is markedly better than both our past and present systems. Doctors, other medical professionals, and patients alike who have experience with excellent health provisions environments 
are urged to show the rest of the nation what has been achieved or let us come together to create them. Thank you. Well, thank you, uh, Michael. Um, so we have, let me just kind of summarize and, and kind of outline a little bit too. We have about nine minutes before our first speaker is gonna come on. So we're just gonna have a little conversation here uh, before that first speaker comes on. So um, yeah, it's our hope that this week, um, you know, brings, like I said in my opening remarks, a sense of unity and that we can all kind of come together and, and, um, and share our thoughts, right? I mean, and just come together as physicians. And I'll just say, and then I'll ask you guys, but I'll just say, you know, I do not have any expertise in healthcare policy or healthcare economics or any of that. I am a small town orthopedic surgeon, but what I can speak to pretty credibly, I think, and with some expertise, is how these changes that are enacted kind of trickle on down and infect, affect me in my office in, when I'm examining patients and how I go about my business. And from that standpoint, I, as an individual practitioner, all of us can speak in a very powerful way. And, and, and I would say it is a, incumbent upon us as physicians to do a little better job of that. In the past, we really haven't done that, but I think it is on us now. I mean, we have to take some personal responsibility, share with our patients, share with the public, really, and, and just share in a heartfelt, deep way how, how we as physicians see things. I mean, I don't say this out of arrogance, but I say it out of, out of a sense of fact. We are the only ones, doctors are, in all of society, in all of society, who can speak to what we do as physicians. No one else can really speak to that. And so, that's our role. We, ha we have to inform. We have to let the public know, well, like, how is this affecting all of this? So I'll stop talking, but I want to, Judy, what, or Mike, do you have any thoughts before we go to our first speaker? And it could be on anything, your hopes for the conference, uh, what you hope to achieve, or just thoughts in general. Sure, Dan. I want to say uh, my wife, Dr. Malink, <clears throat> who's an oncologist and was once named Ohio's Patient Advocate of the Year, um, has long had the concern that doctors don't talk to each other anymore. Mm. Used to, year, years ago when we started this profession, uh, there was a lot of interaction. There was the doctor's lounge, all the doctors around it at the hospital. We saw each other and spoke with each other frequently. And over the years, that has kind of broken down. Uh, we've become more specialized. Some of us are hospitalists only. Some of us don't go to the hospital at all. Um, these increasing demands on our time, such as we're addressing this week, have just made that less and less possible. And so we wanted to create a forum where doctors could come together and talk again about our own profession, um, to enjoy talking with each other about it. Um, I had the thought that <clears throat> if you have a really complex problem, let's say you're trying to create a weather model, and it's a very complex problem, and you need a supercomputer to be able to uh, approach that complexity. If you don't have one, you can link thousands and thousands of desktop computers by the internet and create a virtual supercomputer. So I had the thought, why not create a virtual physician superbrain to address this intractable problem uh, of healthcare? Uh, so, Again, as Dan said, we really need and hope that physicians across the country and across the globe will weigh in and participate in that. Each one of us has our own special little area of expertise that can contribute to that puzzle. Uh, you know, there was a 60 Minutes, CBS 60 Minutes show I saw a couple of years ago about an artist, I don't remember his name, but he's in a wheelchair, and he paints these giant canvases and they're on scrolls, and they scroll up and down, and he paints. In the beginning of the show, it's, the camera's focused close in on him and the canvas, and all you see him doing is painting little squares, one little square at a time. He'll paint one a circle, one an X, just little seemingly random things that don't seem to amount to anything. And later in the program, the camera scrolled back and back and back, and the painting was a magnificent portrait of someone. Mm. So I think we can create a beautiful and magnificent portrait of medicine 
if we'll each put our little square in. Yeah. I want to go back to the beginning and tie up what you all are saying. Yeah. And that is that uh, Dr. Cavioto was sitting and working when he became overwhelmed and frustrated by the impediments to his craft. Mm. And he wrote an op-ed, and that op-ed was published, and it touched a nerve. And that Dr. Strickland, Michael, had a nerve touched, and as a result of having that nerve touched, he had a vision. And then he took that vision, and he carried it forward. And you're, what, what you're seeing here this week is the culmination of a year's work that stemmed from that vision. Um, we really need the support of all of you out there, practicing physicians, those of you who are watching right now, please reach out and touch one more person. Ask that person to touch one more person. Because what we really need is that collective voice that Michael read, made reference to earlier. And uh, perhaps as we move away from the end of the summit, uh, we'll have an idea of what that collective voice will look like. Uh, perhaps we'll just be taking a step in that direction. But really what all of us need to do is take a moment and stop. We're trained to practice medicine. We practice medicine. That's what we love to do. But while we've been practicing medicine, we haven't tended to the business of medicine. And as a result, other individuals have taken over the business of our business. It is our responsibility to come to the table and to participate. So we all know that we're collectively referred to as cats, like we're like trying to herd cats. It's difficult to get us together. It's difficult to get us to focus on a common goal. But this is something now that once again is our personal responsibility to do. As uh, Dr. Strickland said, we need to get our noses up off the grindstone. We need to dedicate some of our professional time, maybe even some of our personal time. We need to get to the table. We need to learn, engage in conversation, uh, bring other people, policymakers, insurance companies, uh, certification uh, organizations um, to the table and into dialogue with us so that we actually participate in what's happening. I think that we are where we are because we have failed to participate. I think that we may be at an inflection point in history because here we are. We're at the table, we're learning, gathering information, and we're ready to come to the table and talk about how to move into the future. Thank you. Yeah, I totally agree with that. We're at a watershed moment in healthcare in this country. Um, and I feel a sense of responsibility that physicians need to speak out to, not that we know all the answers, but we certainly can speak from our perspective um, about healthcare. And I think physicians need to do that. So before we go to our first speaker, let me just remind you. So today, first of all, you can go to our website, uh, letmydoctorpractice.org, and for the whole week, you can click on conference, and you can actually see the topics that we will be speaking on every day. So just realize that. And then at the end of every day, we will have a panel discussion like this, kind of recapping and talking about these issues. And then we will rebroadcast um, these um, topics and the speakers um, every evening. So please go to our conference page and you can look at our topics. And so today we're speaking on health IT um, and electronic health record. We have gr three great speakers, Dr. Michael Karuchak, Senator Bill Cassidy, who's a senator and a physician, and uh, Dr. Michael Gibson, who is the founder uh, of wikidoc.org. So I'm excited to hear from all three of these speakers. We're going to have some great conversations. So, um, here we go. Um, I hope you enjoy this as much as we do. I hope you please send us your questions. We'd like to get them out there to everyone.